Hello, this is Jackie Lee from Science VR. Today we are going to talk about immersive science labs and game development for young learners. This is me, my family. Here's Ed. He's going to appear very soon. So I want to give you a brief overview of what I've been doing and what leads me here, um, Ed, actually, he, he's the guy that leads us here. Uh, he's currently 11 years old, a sixth grader. He got his um, promotion from fifth grade to sixth grade just this year. So he's been in the new campus uh, without getting in touch with any of his new, new classmates. He's also an Unreal Engine developer. We've been working together uh, since the school closure. So uh, you're going to see him in, in some of our video clips. I'm Jackie Lee. I got my PhD from MIT Media Lab, focusing on understanding human emotions using technologies. And then I worked at Intel RealSense where we develop 2D cameras, and later on, AR and VR. After Intel, I founded Science VR. The goal is to think about this new medium that we can design and put our design in front of others' eyes. So this is a very powerful, powerful tool that I think will bring a significant change to our future of education. So um, I'm very fortunate got grants funding from MIT's Sandbox Innovation Fund program and supports from Oculus Start. And we also receive Abbey Mega Grants. We're going to talk about immersive science labs. Why doing this? I think if we can be closer to historical stories, it will be easier for us to learn and discover more stuff. That's a, kind of a general idea. And here we have a few images on, on slides, and we're going to take a short tour um, to some of it. However, the idea is that if we can be closer to historical stories, and this will be very fun to to just take a few steps few steps away from those those famous thinkers, for example, physicists, uh, writers, uh, sci-fi characters, and those writers and thinkers they have great ideas, and what if we can be part of it, their their ideas and tinker around. What they are, what they was working on. I think that will be very, very, very fun for for uh, learners from all ages, especially younger age. We started Science VR by looking at how how we can build science labs inside this immersive environment. We took approach about we, we want to combine historical stories and also interactive interactive visualization and, um, and, and to use those interactivities to get our learners to, to tinker and to build on their own knowledge. So this is also a very powerful way of using immersive media because our users, they can use their hands. So from physics, we we started to build micro Faraday's laboratories where he did a series of electromagnetic experiments. And we review Ada Lovelace and Charles Babbage's Stallone where they they invented the few the first machine that can calculate polynomials. We also rebuilt Mary Curie and Pierre Curie, their, their journey of discovering 
uh, radian and polonium. So um, let's dive in more. Michael Faraday. He invented a series of electromagnetic apparatuses that hugely influence, influence our modern life. And one of the discovery he made was the idea of the field. So what you are seeing here is the, the field lines around the magnet. So he was the first to conceptualize those invisible force lines. And we find that it's quite match to our approach because using VR, we can see the unseen, like the, those invisible force lines. So this is where we started. In addition to those, those visualizing the like unseen, we also can visualize how they think uh, in geometrical ways. Um, Michael Faraday, he's also one of the um, scientists that Albert Einstein admired. There, there were three portraits in Albert Einstein's study, as in Newton, Michael Faraday, and James Clerk Maxwell. They are all visual thinkers. They think in visual and geometrical ways. And we believe that we can, in VR, it's, it's a perfect medium to visualize in those geometrical ways. And maybe we can turn those math become interactive and make them easier to learn. So it's, it's hard to communicate those, those science concepts without you, you understand it and, and use it. So, so that's the idea that we, we design those visualizations. So on the left side, if you Google magnetic field, that's what you can find. However, if you come to Science VR, if you put on the headset, we will take you back to the stories where Michael Faraday discovered those invisible field, field lines around the magnet. And you can use your hands to really pick up the magnet and see the four signs. Um, and to really experience what it's like in front of you. So we find that very powerful to bring the STEM concept in front of you and allow you to use your hands. So, well, you can argue that you can go to Exploratorium. That's a very fun place where you can interact with um, electromagnetic apparatuses, like using your hands. Th these are uh, very fun installations in Exploratorium. And well, you can also go to Faraday Museum where you, you learn about the stories. Um, however, you're not allowed to touch those apparatuses because they are vintage and they are so important that it's, they're in a museum. In VR, this is a place we can combine the two where you still use your hands and also, VR will take you back to the 19th century where Faraday and Maxwell did discover electromagnetism. It will be like this. So you and your friend or your teacher and your classmates can all go into Michael Faraday's laboratory where you share the same um, setup and, and discuss physics with Michael Faraday. So I'm going to show you a video and, and I'm going to also talk about some of the, the labs in our, uh, in, in this video. And this is, this is partially funded by Epimega Grants. This is me tapping on an uh, Enigma machine. That's uh, the machine that uh, World War II, a lot of young sci smart scientists want to break it. Mr. Faraday, this is the talented pupil I mentioned to you before. 
Mr. Faraday explored a series of experiments demonstrating the connection between electricity and magnetism. So we call him the father of electromagnetism. This is Faraday's lab. This is the circuit that you can interact with. Of course, the compass and magnet, invisible forces. This is Austin's discovery first electromagnetic apparatus. MPS right hand over there. This is Nikola Tesla. Tesla coil and Tesla tower. How about Earth's climate? Adjust the year and see our world. This is Abbage's difference engine finite differences to calculate polynomial and Ada Lovelace. This is a bomb machine designed by Alan Turing. It's very easy to take more than nothing. All right, all Change right. logic. Watch me carefully. Shakespeare in some live stream. Archimedes. Dante Inferno. All right. Let's hear what Ed was thinking. Science VR is like more like a classroom lab. You can learn stuff. Like, for example, Michael Faraday. Um, he is like the teacher of the classroom. And he teaches us magnetic fields and how magnets um, make energy. Michael Faraday is like the science teacher. The first is you get the idea and you learn something about them. And then the second part is when you get really interested in it and you keep um, want to um, play it again and again to see which details you didn't notice before. And the third part is when you really want to search up other books to um, help you study about them. So that's uh, some comments from Ed. Actually, the video was recorded about one and a half years ago, almost two years ago. So I want to take you to some of the the Immersive Science Lab we built, ADAS engine. We rebuilt ADAS workshop based on her publications and also some of our imagination. And so this machine in the middle is the analytical engine where, um, if I quote Ada, she said that this machine can be used to um, program point or even music and the machine would do exactly what you wanted to do. And, and she called it um, this, this kind of science. It's a science of operations. So if you put one step after one another, so that becomes a procedural. And the machine will, will follow a procedure to execute one after another. And in this case, we, we redesign analytical engine and with a piano keyboard. So our, any users who doesn't know about programming, they can create some inputs from the keyboard, just like you play piano. And use, some, use those handles and buttons to, to modify the inputs, which is exactly like a, like a program. So as you tinker around the piano keyboard and, and the control panel, essentially you're, you're building your first musical program. Galvanic frog. This is where electricity was used to, to um, like live. Um, well, electricity was used uh, around the, the animal bodies. And Galvani found out that uh, a frog found that twitch when you put uh, metals around, 
around it. But in fact, it's not really um, electricity. What, what's not from the frog? It's from the two metals, two different metals, and touching each other. So in, in this experiment, experiment, our users will be able to discover and explore, explore and discover how, what, what, what kind of combination of metals will make the frog let twitch. And this is actually very important because it leads to the discovery and invention um, of uh, a battery. Curious elements, uh, mercury and pierre we, we want to bring their journey of discovering um, polonium and radium. Uh, so those two elements was um, when they were when they were working together. Th those those were the two elements they they discover by purifying pitch blend and 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 they named those two elements themselves. Carol's Ritos. This is a. Um, um, VR, VR experience that blends two books. Uh, one book, Alice in Wonderland, and another book, uh, The Game of Logic. Both books are written by Lewis Carroll. Carroll himself was, was a mathematician and logician. So this experience, we want to challenge our users to think about symbolic logic by solving riddles. This is a fun one. Archimedes heat rate. This one, our users will go back to the ancient Greek to help defending uh, enemies coming from the coastline by pointing mirrors, mirrors at them. And of course, you have to calculate um, geometry and trigonometry to, to figure this out. And you're part of the the early Greek mathematician, mathematician story. Uh, story. Shelley's, creation. Shelley's creation. I think we I have, think a, we have video a video for it. In the summer of 1816, we visited Switzerland and became the neighbors of Lord Byron. Then it proved a wet and genial summer, and insistent rain often confined us for days to the house. Some volumes of ghost stories, translated from the German into French, fell into our hands. We will each write a ghost story, said Lord Byron. I busied myself to think of a story, a story to rival those which had excited us to this task, one which would speak to the mysterious fears of our nature and awaken thrilling horror, one to make the reader dread to look around, to curdle the blood and quicken the beatings of the heart. Shelley's creation, sci-fi and biology. And Shirley, Mary Shelley, she was the author of Frankenstein. Richard Feynman. So I really like the quote that he said, science is hard because it takes a lot of imagination. And in, in this experience, we are we are making one of his um, inventions that led him to the Nobel Prize, the Feynman's diagram. So in this diagram, um, you can you can play with the combinations that electrons and other particles interact with each other, and by interacting with each other, you can also control the flow of time. For example, if a uh, electron moving through the flow of time and a positron in Feynman's diagram is equivalent to um, a electron but that carries positive charge moving back in time. So in, in, this, in this experience, we let you to use your hands to experience what is Feynman's diagram, what is electron, what is positron. How they are different, and when they interact with each other, there might be light and radiations. 
So um, I works through a few science labs, and they're, they're, just, they're not the full list. And the full list is that I'm thinking about maybe you can build a, a scientist, philosopher, thinker encyclopedia in virtual reality. So this, this image is uh, the Temple of Athens. And with Plato in Archim and and Socrates in the middle, and I think there are some some more um, thinkers around. And I hope we can build this kind of universe where where any learners they can they can go inside the story first before they start to learn anything, and if they find out what they want to learn. And they're interested in learning that more, they're, so they can go for it. They can see and explore um, things, great stories in the history that will lead them to the knowledge that that we uh, that influenced uh, our society today. So I think that will be fun. It's like wiki of uh, a lot of stories, but in in VR. We bring science VR to to museums, to places. Our users always lined up, and when they are lining up, they chat about science, and and they help each other to to figure out things. This is this is a wonderful thing to to witness. Because, um, it's not only like they are learning science, but they are like chatting um, and having fun together. One of our um, young learners said that I just experienced this, the future of education, and we were we were presenting in schools and conferences, museums, and it's it's quite interesting to see young learners they can can um, learn about how to use controllers and navigate through this virtual environment. And also learn something from it. Take home those memories with them. What we want to do is, is very like uh, this image where Michael Faraday, he was lecturing and doing live demonstrations to women, children, and to the general public, so that science is not only belongs to certain group of people, but belongs to the public. So anyone who can put on a headset and witness how science was discovered, and use your hands to tinker, and participate, and be part of the, the uh, historical story. This is what we want to do. Okay, so this is the second half. Half I want to talk about the game development for young learners. I'm going to talk about two case studies, um, Aaron and and Ed. And this is a photo that we went to a hackathon together. And in the back, of course, there are VR headsets and gaming laptops. For Aaron, he was a high school intern. Now he's in college. Uh, he was a very good um, and self-motivated student. And he, I think he learned coding before being our intern. He was interning at the very early stage of Science VR where we, we don't have uh, published any immersive lab yet. And at that time, he helped, he helped us to study and research Charles Babbage's difference engine, and all by himself, and he he helped build the first prototype uh, in, in in VR, so that we can have our other users to to share what he built. So he he did research, and he dig into Charles Babbage's publications to figure out those gears. So those gears are a way that Charles Babbage used. To represent numbers, if you think about the T's on the one gear, 
So those are very like very much like numbers. Like, like here it has ten t's. That would be one to ten. And if you want to calculate two plus three, so you turn that to to turn. You can turn two t's and then turn three t's more. That represents two plus three. So um, by uh, arranging those operations, you can actually uh, compute fairly complex polynomials. That's when but Babbage, Charles Babbage find out by building a machine that he can uh, use that to calculate um, polynomials to help bankers to calculate uh, the interest, for example. And our intern Aaron, he studied uh, this machine. I think that's um, it's quite it's quite good for for high school to take on as a project that they have to master uh, a historical idea and and build it. So the second one we're going to talk about Ed. Um, he's been um, working with me to build games. So I serve as a mentor, mentor and coach, and we we were um, attending hackathons, and he also present uh, his game in science fair, school science fair. Um, this is the the photos that we we took during the hackathon and in science fair, where he he built a uh, he built project that make math more fun to learn. The tool we use is Unreal Engine. Uh, I think this is a very powerful tool for young learners because it has uh, this visual programming part. It's, it's, very, it's quite similar to Scratch that has a visual uh, interface. However, in Unreal Engine, this is, this is a game engine where Triple A studios, they use the game engine to build high quality games that that um, we can download it from from console, from iPhone, from PS4. So this is a very powerful tool and with a visual programming uh, interface. Um, I think because of the visual interface, it's make it much easier to follow when when there's a YouTube uh, video because um, typically they will talk about how it works and and will will play around the the visual interface and do demonstrations and so that uh, it will be I think it's for for young learners the visual way it's it, it make it much easier for them to learn for Ed not only with we we try uh, a real engine. He's quite good now. He considers himself as a intermediate uh, game developer, um, and he's making games and having fun with it. Um, we also try have having him to learn about Python programming. Python is much much more abstract compared to Unreal Engine because. Game engine is quite visual, and there's 3D, 3D elements of it, and uh, it's more like a game. For Python, you basically work with strings, like a series of uh, char English characters, and to process those things, those characters, and it takes some, it takes some training. So we took, um, we have been took some Coursera Python course related to stream processing. However, uh, I, I found that it's hard to motivate him to do Python programming. So I, I also got inspired by, from other YouTube videos from Calm AI about to process coronavirus genomics uh, using Python. Because the genomics there, it's a huge stream. Uh, with only four characters, ACGT. And so in this way, I think it motivates Ed to do this inquiries of, 
of nature, as well as uh, doing Python programming. So um, we talk about Ed and it's been attending Hackathons with me. I think Hackathon is also a very good place where you can spend the weekend and, um, and do some hands-on exercise. I think the hands-on practice is super important uh, for mastering the skills uh, that he learned from videos. We, we work together almost like every day since the, the pandemic because of school closure. So usually I'll, I'll send him some YouTube links for, for the task he, he, want, he needs to, to do for the, this week. And of course I'll be around for him to ask questions. I think that's also an important aspect provide a supportive environment for, for him to um, not get too frustrated when bumping into things that he can uh, overcome. So um, a lot of time he was watching, the, watching and following YouTube videos and tutorials. And I think practicing in practicing um, daily it really helps, and of course, uh, a good coach and tech assistant around him to solve things that might stop him to learn. That's also very important. Okay, um, so in this presentation, we talk about immersive science lab. That's mainly from science VR's uh, virtual labs by providing this playful learning environment where our users put on a headset. And we will teleport them into the historical stories and allow them to be part of it and using their hands to, to tinker around and to, to learn about ideas that influence our modern society. We also talk about game development for young learners. I present you two case studies. One is our intern, high school interns. Another is my son who is programming with me. So I think the key things uh, are we need to enable them to tinker. So we, we need to provide this supportive environment where um, if they have questions, they, can, they are able to get answers quickly. And, and providing uh, a good materials. So for Aaron, it will be historical stories. For Ed, that will be the games that he, he wants to build and have, have fun. That, because that's, uh, that's what drives them to move forward. All right, so I think this is it. Uh, this is Jackie Lee, and thank you very much.